Hi guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint a beautiful fall windy gnome here. So before we start, let's go through all our supplies to make sure we have everything that we need for today. First thing uh, you're going to need is a paper. I have it right here. I have not pre-sketched it, so I'm going to sketch from scratch and I encourage you to follow along with me and you're going to need a regular pencil or any pencil that you have to sketch along with me. Now if you're really not a big fan of sketching and you only want to do it if there is a pre-sketch, no problem, you can download a pre-sketch in the description of this video. There is a link so feel free to download that and transfer it into your onto your paper or you can just sketch along with me. I promise you it's not very difficult. Next thing you're going to need is some water. And you're also going to need a paper towel or a usable fabric cloth, whatever you prefer. I prefer paper towel for um, watercolor paintings, but you definitely could use a tablecloth. Sorry, not the tablecloth, the fiber cloth, if you prefer that. And we're going to need watercolor. I have my Koi palette right here. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like open. And because it's really difficult to see what color is what here, I'm going to be showing you on this paper that actually shows you the proper color for each and every one of them. And of course, we're gonna need a couple different brushes. So if you have a variety of brushes, that's the best. There's no particular brushes that you have to use, um, no number or anything like that. Just, it's good to have a few different options. For example, you wanna have a really good small brush. So let me find something to show you. So for example, this can be my small brush. You see the small brush, the most important part about it, it needs to have a nice pointy tip. So you're gonna need that because we have ton of details. So it's all gonna be done with the small brush. Plus on top of that, if you have a medium and a large or just something bigger is good. I have this one that's bigger. And I think two brushes for me personally would be plenty for this one because there's um, no other sizes here. Like this one is like medium large. And that's great. I don't really need anything bigger than that. So I can do with this too. But if you want to grab something else in addition to that, so maybe let's say something in between is good or um, you can grab something bigger. That's okay too. The variety of brushes is good. So just have two, three brushes. Like this, for example, is perfect. One of them being the small detailed brush and one or two larger brushes. For watercolor, it's always most ideal to use a watercolor brushes. They're softer and they're kind of pointy. So that's what you're looking for. Those are the most ideal brushes for this. All right. And what else? I think that's pretty much it. So let's dive right in. I'm going to start by sketching my gnome. And I'm going to start by um, sketching a nose. Nose is like a little oval potato right in the middle of your paper. So identify where the middle is and then just put that one little oval potato. It's a potato nose. That's kind of not in the middle. Let's move it a little bit more to the middle. Well, that looks a bit more in the middle. Ta-da! Potato nose. And then from there, I'm going to add the hat. So for me, the hat is about more than half of the upper part. So maybe like that. You see, it's a bit more than half of the upper part. But honestly, you can make it bigger or smaller. That's entirely up to you. So I'm going to add this line. That's going to go over my nose and get a little bit down on the sides. And the good thing be about sketching with pencil is that you can always erase it. So you can start with somewhere, start with something, uh, sketch it, and then you can always go back and correct it. You can adjust the sizes, the shapes, the proportions, everything is adjustable. So you really just need to start somewhere. And then after that, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to add a little loopy de loop here. Clean up my lines a little bit. 
clean, clean, clean. All right, happy with this. And after that, and of course you can have a different angle, you can have a bit more, you know, flowing this way or that way, whatever works for you guys. And then after that, once you perfect uh, your hat, you're gonna move to the rest of the body. So the next thing I'm gonna add is a beard, and I'm just again I'm just gonna do a little sketch of a beard. I'm not gonna do the details just yet. I'm just gonna sketch it approximately where it's gonna go. Then I'm gonna move to the rest of the body, and then I'll go back and I'll perfect my hat. So for the rest of the body, I'm gonna add arm on this side and arm on this side. This one is gonna be extended to go on our pumpkin. Then I'm going to add a pumpkin right here, so I'm just going to add a circle for now. So my pumpkin placeholder, a little circle. Then the end, the bottom of the jacket, sweater, whatever he's wearing. Some undergarments, some pants maybe. And then shoesies. All right. Now we can, you know, perfect all the details. So I'm going to start with arm. I'm going to add a sleeve. There's a uh, there's some sort of calf on a sleeve. I'm going to add some here. I'm going to bring this arm maybe even a little bit further. I'm going to add a little hand. And I'm going to do my pumpkin. So this is, I'm going to add a dot somewhere here on the upper side. And from there, I'm going to divide my pumpkin onto little chunks. Okay, it's pretty it's pretty good actually. I'm gonna add some twisty things here, here. And now that I sketched out everything or everything on my gnome, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lighten them up and I'm gonna perfect them, getting rid of all the unnecessary lines. Just, you know, clean it all up a bit. By the way, for those of you guys who are joining us for the first time, maybe you're not sure how this works online, um, the video from tonight, the video that it just is being released right now, it's gonna stay right here. It's not going anywhere. So if you just stumbled across it accidentally, and you feel like I would like to do this some other day, I don't have availability right now, no problem at all. Come back any day. It's going to be right here. We don't remove our videos. Once they have premiered or if we went live, the videos just remain on our YouTube. We don't delete them or anything like that. So whenever you have a chance, you can just come back and do it later. It's totally fine. And also, for those of you who maybe never painted from video before, pausing is always a good option because we usually go at our own speed when we do this tutorials, just because it's the most comfortable, natural speed for us. But depending on your personality and just your experience, you may find that you want to go faster or may find that um, 
you actually need a lot more time because maybe this is your very first time painting maybe you just more a perfectionist and you like to perfect your um, paintings before and you, you just you know you don't like to move too fast or maybe you just like takes things slower that's okay too so whatever the case may be if you feel like you need to pause and take a breather or take a little bit more time for every element feel free to do that you can pause as many times as needed and just go at your own pace make sure you have an enjoyable experience don't rush through it i'm gonna add a stem here too see that little thingy and i'm gonna add Perfect. So my gnome is sketched and now I'm going to sketch a bit of, so I'm not really sketching my grass. I find that it's unnecessary. It's much easier to just free flow it, uh, free hand it. But I do want to sketch my leaves that are flying away and I want to sketch a couple of leaves on the floor because those uh, you have to reserve the spots for when we move on to the grass. So if you sketch them right away, then it's easier for you to reserve spots for them versus having to sketch them on top later. So just as many as you want, wherever you want them to be, just add a few and that will help us again to reserve the spots for them. And we're gonna sketch the leaves that are flying away. So I will start maybe with this one. I'm right-handed, so I generally normally find it's easier to start with the right side, but it doesn't matter at all. So I'm gonna start by putting line. And from that line, I'm gonna add simplified leaf and then I'm going to go over it and perfect it you see I added simplified leaf it's very simple now I'm gonna lightly erase it and now I'm going to zigzag all the edges so I'm going to show you guys closer in a second as well You see, I added zigzaggy edge onto my leaf. So I started with just very simple light lines and then I perfected it. And the same I'm going to do for the next one. Next one is going to be a much simpler leaf. So just, you know, very, very simple. And again, I added it very lightly first, just for the shape. Now I'm going to erase it a bit to make it even lighter. And then I'm going to go over it and I'll perfect it. All right, and then I'm gonna go on to the other side and I'll do the exact same thing. So I added leaf, just, you know, very lightly. I'm gonna sort of erase it. And, and I'll go with the final details, which are all slightly zigzaggy. And then one more leaf flying away, this one. Same thing, first you're gonna add the base of the leaf and then we're gonna go over it and we'll perfect it. All right, all done, our sketch is done. So I'm gonna put my pencil away and I'm gonna move to my painting. Now, where do you start here? I mean, there are a lot of different places you could start if you wanted to. I think personally, I would like to start with the background. So I'm gonna go with my bigger brush. I'll dip it in the water and I'm gonna start with my sky background here. So choose any blue, whatever blue you have, whatever blue you personally like. I'm gonna go with this one. As you can see, it's like a colder, fairly dark blue, but because I'm not gonna be using too much of it, it's not gonna be that dark. It's going to be much lighter because it's really is all about you don't have to use light blue to get light results it's just use more water less pigment and you're going to get a lighter it's more like you're choosing your shade from what you have so i would like that shade and i'm going to start i always put my paint on my tray first and i highly suggest that with watercolor because otherwise you're going to always end up with too much or too little likely too much 
pigment and not enough water. So it's always good to bring it to the right consistency on your watercolor palette or if you don't have one, um, regular plate is just fine. Nothing wrong with just plate or piece of plastic. Honestly, whatever you have. All right, so I'm going to start by watering down my sky. So I'm going to take some water on my brush and I'm literally just going to go over my sky and add lots of water. I will try to avoid my leaves, but I'm not going to be too crazy about it. If some paint gets on the leaves, whatever, it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, try to avoid them, but I wouldn't spend too much time there because watercolor generally when you work with the wet techniques, it needs to be done fairly fast. So if you go perfect outline every single, you know, zigzag here, by the time you're done, everything is going to be dry. So you wouldn't be able to do what we actually need to do. So just, you know, roughly go around it. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so I have a ton of water, as you can see here. And I'm just going to take my pigment and I'm going to start adding it in. So do you see I added some? Now I'm going to take just straight water and I'm going to smudge it a little bit. You know, you create a pattern, whatever you want. This is where you decide how much paint you're going to have, how watery or not watery is going to be. And again, I'm going to take some water, smudge it a little bit further. I usually like to have my edge really nice blending into, you know, the white paper. We'll add a couple more. And it's always a good idea to add a bit of splatter, especially while everything is wet because it, it's going to flow really nice. Beautiful. I love that. Now I'm going to do an underlay of green on a bottom. So that's going to let everything on top um, so give it some time to dry because actually we can do two areas side by side until the first area dries. It's going to be um, just because it's going to flow. So it's going to be a bit difficult to work there until it dries fully. But while that's drying, we can work a bit on a bottom. So you can, again, you're going to choose your base green, whatever green you prefer. I think for me personally, I'm going to go with something like that because it's a nice, um, I know it's hard to see here, it's a nice light green, but it's on a dimmer side. It's not vibrant like this one, it's not like a lime green. This ones are kind of vibrant, different shades but vibrant. This one is a little bit dimmer, and I want something a little bit dimmer, a little bit softer, but again, totally up to you, whatever green you have, or whatever green you prefer. And if you don't have any, you can easily mix green. And green is just yellow and blue, so if you have yellow and blue of any kind, mix them up that will give you green again we're always going to go on our palette first before we go 
onto our paper. And to darken it up, you can always add a smidge of brown or a smidge of black to make it a little bit dimmer and a little bit darker. And I will actually be doing that as well as we go. But I don't need it to start. So I'm going to start with um, just this one. Because I'm still going with light color, you can go over your leaves. But ideally, you still want to avoid your leaves here because we sketch them specifically for that to reserve those spots for the leaves. That way, because watercolor it doesn't have white, right? So it overlaps, everything overlaps. So to use white in watercolor, you actually have to reserve white paper for whatever you want to have to be white. Because watercolor is transparent paint. So if let's say I paint everything green here and it gets dark and then I place orange leaves, they add, they're not gonna look orange, they're gonna look dark brown. Because my orange is gonna overlap my dark green. So again, you have to consider that with watercolor always it's everything about overlapping you're going to see everything underneath the color that you're going to use next So again, nice light base, and then as we go closer to our gnome, now I'm gonna start darkening it up. And you don't have to wait for it to dry. You can do it while everything is still wet, that's totally fine. So again, I'm gonna take some of this green here, but now I'm gonna darken it up. So you can either add darker green if you have that. Um, if you don't have any darker green, I personally have a bit of darker green, so I can add a bit of my darker green, but also you can just add a bit of black or brown and we'll get it darker so you could do that um, and with I will add a little bit of brown as well to my paint because again we're making custom color why not right we don't have to use just what we have on a palette so I took a little bit of brown a little bit of darker green you see it it's like swampy color I'm gonna do a bit of that as well you don't have to go super dark it's not the darkest color that we're gonna use we're going to use even darker colors uh, with the brush strokes. This one is more of still a base color. And use a medium or a large brush. Ideally, I mean, if you find it difficult to work with medium or large here, small is just fine. But I find that for any larger areas, small brush can be a little bit of a pain to use. But again, use whatever works for you. Either is fine as long as it works for you. It's more about comfort the right and the wrong way so do you see i added some now i washed my brush dabbed it off dabbed excess water on a palette and now i'm just gonna go ahead and smudge this into a background so we have this nice gradient of darker green right beside our gnome and then it just gets a little bit lighter as we go further out All right, awesome. Now I'm going to let that dry again because it's all about drying. So in my case, there's not much I can do right now because my uh, top is not dry yet. My bottom is not dry yet. So the only thing that I can see that I can work on is going to be the noses and the hands because those don't touch any other wet areas. So for that, of course, I'm going to switch the brush. I'm going to put away my large one and I'm going to take my small one. And honestly, I'm going to make a custom color this time. So you're gonna take any pink that you have and any orange that you have. For me, I have this beautiful light orange that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna take one of the pinks, whichever, it doesn't really matter, maybe this one. And we're gonna mix them up in a very light proportion. So let's start with orange. So just orange and pink, 
with ton of water. That's what you're looking for. So I'm gonna take some orange and I'm gonna take some pink. Again, it doesn't matter which pink you have. Any, if you don't have any pink, red is just fine. And then you're gonna mix them up with lots of water. And you see, it will turn into a nice corally, peachy, pinky color, depending on your proportions. And all of that is fine. You can really change your proportion based on your preferences. And then with the light version of that, we're gonna add it on our nose and we're gonna reserve a little spot in the middle completely uncovered. So you wanna have a little spot in the middle, just white. All right, and the same on hands. So you see, I added lightly, leaving the middle lighter. Now, if you wanna take a bit more saturated version of that, or even make it darker by adding a smidge more red and a smidge more orange, or you can even add a smidge more brown. And again, I mean, you can mix any skin tone that you want. You can make a dark brown to begin with and then use even darker brown for the outline. It really is whatever works for you. I'm just teaching based on what I originally made. So I did a bit of brown there and I am going to add that closer to the edge. Same with hands, I'm gonna add it closer to the edge. done now i could probably work a bit on my beard because again majority of my beard doesn't touch anything wet and here i don't really need to wet my beard fully what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use a black or gray for my beard so whatever you have black or gray um you're going to grab that let's put it on our palette here and first layer i'm going to put it a little more concentrated than what i need And then the first layer, I'm gonna use very light. So I'm just gonna take a touch of that, water it down more. You see, I made a super light paint. And with a super light paint, I'm gonna start adding flicks from the edge of the beard in. Do you see? They're very, very light. And I'm using almost like just a dirty water. You see how light it is. And I'm gonna do that for all my beard. I'm gonna add those super light hair flicks. Then I'm going to take some of the slightly darker color. So I'm going to take this now and I'm going to add another layer. But this time I'm going to do less of them. So with every addition of color, as we go darker, you want to add less and less and less. So you see your previous color. So the first light gray is that's where you want to add the most of it. And with every following color, you just want to add less and less and less. So then all of the... All of the little flicks are visible. All of your colors are visible in the end. All right, so this is enough for now. I will probably add a bit more even darker color, but not right now. I'm gonna leave it for now. 
let's see what's dry what's wet okay my top is dry so i can move on to working on my top and we're gonna move on our hat i'm gonna use the spot because i don't need the skin color anymore we're done with that so i'm just gonna use the spot for my red so you can decide what red out of whatever red you have just choose one for me it's gonna be this one and just again choose whatever red you have and i would suggest grab medium or a large brush for this and we're gonna start by just putting our red on our plate Now I'm going to take some of that, pretty saturated I would say, and I'm going to paint my head. So I will, when I use saturated paint, I usually start at the edge and I paint my edges with, a, again, fairly saturated paint. But make sure your sky is fully dry for this. All right, now once you paint it, you can wash off your brush and just with clean water, connect the two in the middle. Or if you need to, if you feel like you didn't add enough paint for you to do this, you can add a bit more paint, but just make sure your middle is a bit lighter. So do you see by me connecting them with primarily water, it looks much lighter in the middle. done beautiful now again we're gonna let it dry we can do anything with it until it dries it's all about this thing is all literally all about drying in between the layers now i'm gonna do because my bottom is drying now i can do the um jacket so for the jacket i'm gonna take the same green as before that green that i used originally and it was just a fairly light version of that i'm gonna color the whole jacket I'm not really trying to accomplish anything here other than lay a base of fairly light green as my underlay. and underneath it so i can't go right under because again the wet paint will flow down but i could go a bit further than that or to the legs and do the legs and legs i'm just gonna do in brown whatever brown you have grab a bit of that no particular shade at all whatever anything works Small brush, medium brush, any of that works here. Probably not the large one because those are fairly small details. I'm just gonna color those two legs with brown. And once I color them right away while they're still wet, I'm actually gonna take my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and I'm gonna wipe up the little sections here so the legs look not even brown, but one side looks lighter, one side looks darker. Awesome. So again, we'll let that dry. As that's drying, we can work a little on our leaves that are flying away. And you're just gonna use a combination of orange, brown, and red to fill them. So you're gonna use a small brush. So I have some brown here, I have some red here. Now I just gotta put some orange somewhere. Let's put it maybe right here. And with a combination of these three colors, orange, red, and brown, I'm gonna fill in my leaves. Doesn't matter where you start. Let's start with this guy right here on the left. 
So I'm gonna, I usually start with the lightest color and a small brush. And then I'm gonna fill in the majority with this color. Then I'm gonna take my second color, add a bit of that, merge them. And I'm gonna take my third color, add a bit of that and merge them. I don't wash my brush in between because I find that it's actually cool that they all blend into one another. You know, they're not straight shades of orange, um, red and brown. They're all mixed in together, which is cool. I like that. Then I'm going to wash my brush after I'm done this one and I'm going to move to the next one. And I'll do pretty, approximately the same thing. So I start with my lightest color base and then I just add my darker colors. And if you want, you can even add some green, you can add some yellow. As you know, fall leaves, they come in such a variety of shades and colors. So as long as there is a fall leaf that exists in that shade, you're good. So it's whatever your imagination takes you here. Just I would say the only thing, don't go too dark because we will still be adding details on those leaves. So as long as they are somewhat on the lighter side, they don't have to be super light either. Just not super dark. We're all good because we want to be able to see our details once we add. Oops. My goodness, added my paintbrush into my tea. Well, I guess I'm not going to be drinking that tea again. Let's just take my painting water and put it in a proper place. It doesn't happen every time, but it happens quite often. The important part is to realize you did it before drinking that. Probably not die if I drink it, but it's likely not going to be pleasant on a taste. All right, let's do a couple more leaves here. I think, oh, maybe for this one, we'll take some yellow too. Why not? Again, all colors that are present in fall leaves, you're welcome to use. Beautiful. And the same here, if your um, grass is dry, you can just add color to these leaves on the bottom. Again, any fall colors that you want to fill them with, with is great. Just variety is awesome. A little bit of this, a little bit of that again. Pretty much same way that we did on top. That looks great. Um, what I don't have the bases yet for is my pumpkin and this part. So let's do that. Everything around it is dry, so I should be able to continue here. So for the pumpkin, I'm just going to grab straight orange. You can even actually mix it with a bit of yellow so it's on a lighter side, but not necessarily. If you're happy with your orange, how it is, you could use that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it again closer to the edge. I'm using small brush here closer to the edge of each segment. And then I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it off in a paper towel, and I will merge this with a clean brush. So do you see it looks like a darker outline with a lighter middle? And that's exactly the goal. So I'm gonna do the same with every single part here. Or wherever possible, if some parts are really small, you don't have to do that. But for the larger ones, for sure, you wanna do that.
All right, so my pumpkin, the first layer is done. And now I'm just gonna color in this little part and that's what I'm gonna do with a mixture of brown and red. So again, I'm gonna take some more brown here. I'll also take some red as well. Any red will do, but preferably darker. If you have a darker red, that's awesome. If not, you can always even add a smidge of uh, black to darken it up if you feel like it's too light. So this is my mixture of brown and red. I'm just gonna go right here. All right, uh, what we're gonna do now is we could probably go back to our hat. Yeah, our hat is dry now. So you can use medium or small brush for this and we're just gonna take again, straight red. I'm not gonna be adding to this one any black just yet. So I'm just gonna take straight red, pretty saturated again. And I'm just gonna add it um, to it. I'm gonna add in a little flicks from the sides here to indicate those folds on a hat and a bit from the other side as well. So again, for the folds on a hat. Awesome. And now I'm gonna go on to my jacket and I'm going to use my small brush and I'm going to take the same green just a little more saturated. If you want to you can add a bit more black to it, a bit more uh, brown or a bit more dark blue so just something to make it darker unless you have darker green in which case you can add a little bit of a darker green. So you see it's a little bit darker, it's not by much darker. And I'm going to add some flicks here to make certain areas appear darker and some onto the outline as well. You see? And with the same color, I could go on to, I might even make it a little bit darker, onto my bottom. And I'm going to start adding grass. So from the inside out, I'm going to start adding lots of flicks that mimic the grass. Yeah, so from the middle out, I'm going to do lots of that. All right, so do you see a nice base for my grass? Um, now I'm gonna go even darker. So you're gonna take even darker blue if you have it. If not, you're gonna take 
your sorry not blue green darker green if you have it if you don't have any darker green you can take existing green plus darker blue plus a touch of black to make a darker green and again I'm gonna add just a bit of that as well and from this I'm gonna add a couple branches that come from the outside so do you see I had a flick and then to this flick I'm gonna add leaves so little flicks on the sides do you see now it looks like a branch and I'm gonna add quite a few of those in any direction that you want and the flicks can be from the outside in from the inside out they're gonna look different depending on whether you do them from the outside in or inside out but both is good both is beautiful it's more again of your personal preference which one you like more We're going to add some on the other side too. Again, as many as you want. All right, and with the same, maybe I'll add a couple more here, a little flicks. With the same one, you can even go back to your uh, jacket or you can make it even darker. So you can add a smidge of black to it or brown and go back to our gnome's jacket and darken up certain areas one more time. So you see we're darkening it up in layers. With every time we add something darker, we build in the intensity, but also again, Every time we go over with darkness, we add less and less and less because otherwise you're just going to end up with everything being dark. But that's not the goal. The goal is to have layers of color. That looks beautiful. Okay, so you can darken up. You can grab now darker brown there, or um, you can grab brown mixed with black if you don't have any darker brown. So I'm going to take some brown. I'll mix it with a little bit of black. And I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to darken up some of this. Awesome. So now pumpkin, let's work a little bit on our pumpkin. So I'm going to take my orange and I'm going to take a little bit of brown and add to it. Alternatively, you can even add some black to it, whatever works. I think brown is good. And we're going to take a little bit of that and we're going to add it onto our pumpkin. Maybe I'll add a bit more orange. You can even add some red to it. So just make a custom color that you're happy with.
All right. And if you want to the uh, inside, if you feel like for me right now, it kind of feels not colorful enough. So I'm just going to take a bit of yellow. I'm just going to lightly overlap it. And do you see? It brings the color, it makes it a little, it pops a, a little bit better. And another color I'm going to add there is going to be a redder color. So now to this brown that I just used, I'm going to add a darker red. And with this color, I'm going to go ahead and add even more into the middles. But again, the lines that I'm adding are finer than in a previous color because you don't want to cover up all your previous color fully. All right, and in the same color or similar, so anywhere between brown, red, orange, and black mixture, for me it's like a darker red, browner color, I'm gonna go into my all my leaves and I'm gonna add a little lines to add a design to them. So I don't have much of this color left, so I'm gonna make it again. I'm just gonna take my dark red and I'm gonna mix it with some brown. So those are the two colors I'm mixing. I'm just going to add a bit of pattern to those leaves. So I added some there and I'm going to add some to the sleeves on the bottom. I might even go around the nose area and the hands a little bit, but don't overdo it because this is a pretty dark color. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to splatter a little. So I'm going to use a different brush for that. I'm going to use something larger, so medium or large. And I'm just going to add a couple splatters around my leaves here. And if your splatters look too dark, they look almost like black, you can just grab a paper towel and lightly, very lightly tap it. And you see it absorbs a lot of that paint that makes it uh, reveal the color better. It doesn't erase it at all. It just makes it a bit more visible, the color that you wanted it to be. Okay, and I'm going to add the stem of my pumpkin in green as well. No detail right here. And after that, I'm going to move to my red and black. So again, I'm going to take the same red that I used for my hat, put it right here, but this time I'm going to add black to it. So just a little bit. You don't need too much black because black, black is a very powerful color. It will overpower everything really fast. So I'm just going to add some and then I'm going to add with this darker color. I'm going to add it from this right side again but a bit less than the previous time. I'm going to add it on this edge of the hat on the bottom. Maybe a little bit on the other edge too. Just a tiny touch. All 
All right, and now I'm gonna move to black. So I'm just gonna grab straight black. You can use gray too, either gray or black. And we're just gonna add a bit of contrast with this color. You can add a bit right at the bottom of the hat, like right at the edge or anywhere we feel like it lacks contrast. It could benefit from some contrast. I'm going to do this pumpkin. Bit of contrast from the top and the bottom of my pumpkin. I will definitely add some on the beard. So the same flicks like I did before, just less this time. Again, as every layer we add, we add less and less and less. Then I'm going to add some grass as well. The last layer of grass. So this is going to be straight black. But again, it's not. I'm not using it super saturated. I'm using quite transparent. So just some Rita full on black. It's definitely darker than everything else, but I wouldn't say it's like super black. Again, I'm just going to add some grass. All right, and last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of red or orange or, you know, any fall-ish color to um, my grass. So I'm going to take some red here. I'm just going to add, I'm assuming that there's some plants that are growing here. So I'm just going to add some dabs here, those beautiful plants. two strings on this side. You could do more than two. Again, you can do more than just red. You can do some orange, some red, some yellow, just assuming that there's some beautiful plants growing there. Maybe I'll add one more here or even a few. All right, and then when you feel like it's done, you can go ahead and you can sign it with your name or your initials or anything else that you would like. And I will actually, as my final touch, will add a bit of splatter in red. I feel like I will want to do that. And again, I will dab it a bit with my paper towel so it looks a bit less intense. And that's it, we're officially done. And of course, you guys feel free to add anything that you want. But I'm personally done and I love it. I think it looks awesome. Well, here are our two beautiful fall gnomes. Please feel free to share your results with us. We do have a two groups that uh, we use for people to share their results. One is generally for anything, acrylic, drawing, watercolor, um, and link is in description. And one is specifically for watercolor. So feel free to share there uh, so you can get comments and feedback and compliments from like-minded people who are on the same journey of learning watercolor painting. And you can find, again, the link in description of this group. And we, of course, we always love to see how your results turned out because, you know, it makes us feel good <laughs> to see how beautiful your paintings are. So feel free to do that. And thanks for joining me, guys. Let's do this again sometime. Bye, everyone.